We have prepared a series of online training modules about the grading of recommendations, assessment, development and evaluation approach to assessing the quality of evidence and summary of findings tables. Grading of recommendations, assessment, development and evaluation stands for GRADE. In these modules, we will describe the evaluation of the quality of a body of evidence using this GRADE approach and how to prepare summary of findings tables. We will focus on the steps that are involved in the creation of summary of findings tables, including choosing outcomes, evaluating the quality of evidence, and which factors should be considered when assessing the quality of evidence, presenting statistical results, and using software such as GradePro to create summary of findings tables. In this module, we will cover how the grade approach fits into the process of moving from results to conclusions and systematic reviews, and how they might be used for the development of recommendations. What are the basic principles of GRADE and why we create summary of findings tables and what the general format of the summary of findings tables is will also be covered. Cochrane systematic reviews use systematic methods to summarize research evidence. Great emphasis is placed on transparency, such as transparently defining explicit inclusion and exclusion criteria, defining the search strategies, and describing the methods of analysis. In all of these areas, great progress has been made. More recently, the Cochrane Collaboration has increased its intention to prepare transparent guidelines to interpret results and to present results. The summary of findings tables and using the GRADE approach are part of this increased emphasis on transparency. We know that people are thinking about a lot of different factors when they move from the results to the conclusions and discussion sections in systematic reviews. Take a deep breath and think about um, how you would consider um, factors that interpret the results of a review. Put yourself in the role of an author, a peer reviewer, a member of the editorial team, or even a reader of a systematic review. Consider this example. It comes from a review on the use of parenteral blood thinners such as heparin and its impact on outcomes in patients with cancer. The meta-analysis and forest plot you see in front of you basically deals with the impact on adverse events such as major bleeding and in particular whether the major bleeding is increased in patients who receive heparin. Consider the forest plot. How would you interpret this forest plot? What would you consider when deciding whether you are, in, are confident in the results of this meta-analysis and whether heparin increases the risk of major bleeding? Take a moment to consider these factors. Some of you might look at the number of studies in the meta-analysis. They will evaluate how many people were in control and the intervention groups, how many events actually occurred, how important was the heterogeneity that was observed, what was the degree of it? How big is the effect? How precise was the effect? But some of you might have not looked at all of these factors and may have forgotten about a few others. To remind those conducting systematic reviews as well as those interpreting systematic reviews, the GREAT approach systematically presents the factors that are important when interpreting evidence and results. It makes us consider the evidence for each outcome because the evidence can be different for each outcome. For instance, the number of studies contributing to an outcome can differ as well as the underlying quality of the evidence for each outcome. Great reminds review authors and others conducting systematic summaries of the evidence to think about all important factors including the magnitude of an effect. It does make the process systematic and by ensuring that those who evaluate the quality of evidence, it ensures that, this, that the process is systematic and that reasons are provided for judgments and this process ensures transparency as well. This cartoon shows how we look at our confidence in evidence and the magnitude of effect. It shows two meteorologists. One says to the other, I figure there's a 40% chance of showers and a 10% chance we know what we are talking about. Once again, this very much reflects effects in healthcare. It separates the magnitude of an effect, such as a 40% chance of showers, from the confidence in the evidence behind it, that the meteorologists are about 10% sure 
that they know what they are talking about. Grade defines the quality of evidence in the context of a systematic review. It defines it as the quality of evidence reflects the extent to which we are confident that a point estimate of effect is correct. In the context of making recommendations, it is defined as the quality of evidence reflects the extent to which our confidence in an estimate of the effect is adequate to support a particular recommendation. We will now introduce how we grade the quality of evidence, in particular the quality of a body of evidence, and then how we present it to readers. In the grade approach, recognizing that the quality of evidence comes on a continuum, we do separate the categories high from moderate from low to very low. This is primarily done to facilitate communication. As in other grading systems, the randomized controlled trial evidence is judged as high quality, observational studies start as low quality. This is based on the assumption that randomization is the best method to control for unknown variables that influence um, effect estimates. There are five factors that can lower our confidence in the estimate of an effect. In other words, five factors that can lower the quality of evidence. There will be individual modules for how to use the following criteria that determine this quality of evidence and they are also explained in the Cochrane Handbook in more detail as well. The first factor is limitations in the detailed design and execution of studies. In other words, the risk of bias criteria. The second factor is inconsistency or heterogeneity of results across studies. The third is indirectness. We are specifically referring to the PICO criteria and in other terms, it could be called applicability. The fourth factor is imprecision. This is primarily based on the number of events and the number of participants and how that affects confidence intervals. The fifth factor is publication bias. The effect estimate in a meta-analysis or systematic review can be presented in more user-friendly numbers. In the summary of findings tables, we use relative risks and odds ratios to present numbers in simple frequencies, such as numbers out of 100. Continuous outcome measures, such as mean difference or standardized mean differences, can also be presented as mean scores in regards to how much the mean score was lower in an intervention group as compared to a control group. And that can be done um, as an expression as being lower by a certain number. We will now introduce the summary of findings table in more detail. The summary of findings table is a summary of the key findings from a systematic review, and it presents the quality of the evidence, the magnitude of an effect, and the reason behind judgments that are being made to evaluate the quality of evidence. The summary of findings table follows a standardized format, including information on the healthcare question, based on the PICO format, the outcomes related to the PICO question, the number of participants, the number of studies, the relative effects, absolute effects, as well as the quality of evidence supported by comments and footnotes that serve as explanatory remarks. This slide shows a summary of findings table in an overview. Factors that were just described are depicted in the summary of findings table. Let me start by explaining the components of a summary of findings table in greater detail. The red frame box indicates the formulation of the clinical question. It includes the patient population or the population in general, the interventions and the comparisons. It is presented at the top of the summary of findings table. The outcomes are listed below. Let us move to the results section that completes the formulation of the clinical question or healthcare question. The results section starts by listing all patient important outcomes or population important outcomes. It is recommended that not more than seven outcomes are listed in a summary of findings table. You will see that for this particular healthcare question, dealing with self-management for patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, 
quality of life, difficulties breathing, that is dyspnea, the number and severity of exacerbations, and respiratory-related hospital admissions are considered to be patient-important outcomes. These outcomes should be reported on. It is important to note that ideally systematic reviews will start by thinking about a systematic evaluation of all of these outcomes. That is, they should start by thinking how a summary of findings table will look while preparing the protocol for a review. Once again, the focus should be on all patient important outcomes. A key aspect of the summary of findings table is that it translates the relative risks or odds ratios and mean differences into numbers that people are able to understand. It does so by comparing what happens in people who didn't receive a particular intervention or management strategy and those who did receive a particular intervention or management strategy. In this case, those who did not attend self-management programs and those patients who did receive self-management programs. It is described in the two columns framed in red. For example, in the first row describing the outcome quality of life, in the usual care group, the mean quality of life ranged across the control groups from 38 to 60 points. This is on a scale from 0 to 100, where a scale point difference of 4 points is considered to be important to patients and higher scores are considered to be lower quality of life. The mean quality of life score thrown in the third column in the intervention group was 2.58 points lower, or in other words, 2.58 points better. In parentheses, you will find the confidence interval around the difference of 2.58 points. The next column shows the relative effect related to the interventional management strategy. In this case, self-management for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Only the outcome respiratory-related hospital admissions provided a relative effect estimate. It was a rot odds ratio of 0.64 with, with a confidence interval of 0.47 to 0.89. The next column shows the number of participants and the number of studies related to the healthcare question that were included in the systematic review. The column entitled Quality of the Evidence in parenthesis grade, describes the quality of the evidence related to the body of evidence for a specific outcome. For instance, it was moderate for quality of life and it was low for the outcome dyspnea. Finally, there's a common column. It includes information that is important for understanding the information provided for each outcome or important additional information. A critical part of the summary of findings table are the footnotes. They provide clarifications and explanations for the judgments that have been made. It therefore enhances transparency related to the summary of findings tables and the systematic review. A special software called Great Pro or the Great Profiler is used to create summary of findings tables. It does interact with Review Manager and also provides the possibility of preparing complete evidence profiles that transparently lay out judgments that are being made about the underlying quality of evidence for each outcome. As in the other modules, we remind you to look for further explanation and examples in the Cochrane Handbook, in particular chapters 9 and 12, in the great handbook associated with the great profiler software that can be found easily in the context specific help section. And if you have any questions, please contact support at greatpro.org. Thank you for listening and participating in this training.